Hello friends, welcome back to the farm. Today we have a very exciting forest forensics. I bet you can't even tell what this is. This is a, this is a water garden former, I would call this a former water garden. Um, this is the bottom part of one of the, those like five gallon water jugs. And I was growing water spinach in here for a few years now but as you can see the water spinach this is dead now everything in here this is fully dead so i'm like why am i keeping a mosquito breeding ground around for no reason and there are definitely mosquitoes breeding in there i can see them and uh so i thought i would empty it out start fresh i've got my fresh cuttings and a zola in here let me show you what should be in here. So this is uh, water spinach. It's also called King Kong. Sometimes not King Kong, Kang Kong. And it is uh, Ipomoea aquatica. And Ipomoea, if you're familiar with sweet potato, sweet potato is Ipomoea batatas. So that's the Ipomoea of the batata, otherwise known as potato variety. And this is Ipomoea aquatica. The one that goes in the water and I actually I cut a couple of um, vines of some of the, our sweet potatoes so you could see just how similar these are um, so this is the leaves of the Ipomoea batatas and these these come in a lot of different varieties but they're basically like this so you can see the leaves are just a little bit different but they're both viney one of the things that's cool about them is that at every node you can have a leaf or a root so what how and they grow from vines and also from well they also have flowers the flowers are actually very similar Ipomoea is sometimes called the morning glory um, genus and they a lot of the flowers are kind of similar so this uh, the water spinach has white flowers and the sweet potato has white flowers with a bright purple center <clears throat> so let me show you on the sweet potato also here, there's one main vine and leaves and sometimes other vines grow off of each of these nodes. And one of these little nodes can have either root or um, leaf or more vine or all at the same time. So here's one. I'm hold, why am I holding it upside down? Here's one. <laughs> the main vine you can see, and then uh, it won't focus, jerk, there you go. The main vine you can see, then there's some roots coming out, and there's also leaves coming up. So when you clip this, even technically one of these nodes can start a whole new plant. But if you wanna give it a better shot at life, you give it a few nodes. So here I've got a few. And what I like to do with, you know, many other plants that you propagate by cuttings, we're going to remove the bottommost leaves so that it can focus on making roots and focus on the larger leaves. I haven't done that yet, but that's going to happen. And the azola, you might remember from previous episodes, the azola is tiny aquatic plants that are related to ferns. And uh, many people like them in their water gardens. We use them as green mulch, which means living things that you throw on your plants in the garden for so that as it decomposes, the nutrients from that green stuff will go into the soil. But now comes the exciting part. We will empty this out and see what's in there. First, I'm gonna see what color the water is because it's kind of hard to tell. Let's see, all right, water is brown. Next, I'm gonna see if there's something, like what? what is this? Is there something living in there? Roots. Roots, rotten roots, looks like a lot of rot. I'm going to smell it. Yeah, these are rotten roots for sure. This looks like rotten stems of uh, water spinach. 
I'm going to smell it lightly because I suspect that it's anaerobic and a lot of the time things that are anaerobic do not smell good. So I'm going to smell it just lightly. It does not smell good. It smells kind of like rot. Um, here's some more stuff. I think this is all dead roots. Clumped up dead roots. Let's see if there's anything else in here. Just out of curiosity. And it kind of falls apart real easy. So because, you know, we don't like to waste organic material here on the farm. So what I'm going to do is dump this all into something else. And then probably dilute it. Because it's anaerobic. I don't want to toss a whole bunch of anaerobic stuff. It can like... So the microbes that live in anaerobic environments are like very different from the ones that live in aerobic environments. And uh, sometimes if you bring a lot of those anaerobic microbes into your aerobic soil environment, it can disrupt it and introduce things that upset the current balance of microbes that you have that's kind of keeping your, your soil healthy and happy and functioning. So what I would do is either, I don't know, maybe aerate it, dilute it, something like that, and then toss it maybe on something like a banana that doesn't care. <laughs> oh, there's so many mosquito babies in there. I'm doing this just for the camera because I have to hold this with one hand. Because, I mean, this is not, I mean, there's a lot of dissolved, decomposed plant material in here. It's not all bad. I'll probably put this in a bucket. Put this in a bucket. Um, dilute it with a lot of other water. And aerate it, which means I'll just mix it a lot so that oxygen, like air, goes into it. And maybe if I aerate it, that'll kill off everybody who I don't want in my soil environment. And, oh, that's gonna overflow. And then I'm gonna restart this from scratch, put in fresh water, put in these guys, but just the uh, water spinach, not the sweet potato. The sweet potato I'm gonna put elsewhere. And now we have done a forest forensics and discovered what was in the bottom of this old dead, this old dead failed pond. And next time we will do better. All right.